what we have the Rochester Stockbridge Unified District Board of School Directors regular meeting. One breath. Tuesday, April 5th, 2022, 6.30 p.m. Rochester campus and via Google Meet agenda. I uh, called us to order. Adjustment to the agenda. So you say we have this full board updates. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes, you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read it. <laughs> I do read letters, but I didn't read this. Yeah. Um, I read the agenda. Assign timekeeper. Well, we'll do our best. Actually, I think, I mean, like tonight looks, looks pretty easy. We'll see. Um, um, Amy, we're due to do your, your due diligence. Yeah. Uh, consent agenda, five minutes. Public comment doesn't look like any, but we'll give it, you know, whatever. Uh, board comment. Um, let me give it five. Celebration of learning. Do we have something? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. About That's 10, longer. probably. 10 minutes. Great. Yep. Thank you. Uh, superintendent, 10. Yeah. 10. yeah. How many questions you have? Uh, principal, 5, Same, 10. 5 to 10. 5 to 10. Yeah. How many I, questions you have? Yeah, yeah, five. 10. I'll say 10 for principal. Uh, business manager, um, is that where we're going to talk about the yield? Five to ten, probably. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, and good evening, Tara. How are you? Uh, WRVSU Policy Committee. Am I on that? I'm not on that anymore, am I? No, I don't think so. I hope not. I haven't gone to it in a while. I think you are. I am? I think you are. Policy? So I thought you said I was on full board. You were at the last full board meeting? I don't think you were. You were on the no. Board. I was out of town. I was here. Yeah. I'm doing my best to try and get voted out of being chairman. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're no, a lifer. When he was asking if somebody else would come to the dull. <laughs> oh, yeah, I misspelled it. Oh, God, that was bad. It spells correct. That was dull. really, it was a spell. Oh, Lord, it was a dull board yeah. meeting. And I really was supposed to be full, full, full. <laughs> yes, no, we were at town, uh, Rochester Town Meeting. Uh, okay. Um, so, so policy no, committee, policy well, committee. I, somebody, you got anything to talk about? Yeah, policy a couple committee. minutes. Okay, okay. okay, fine. And then the uh, full board updates, yeah, let's give us, I think five, uh, let's give us ten. That's that's a real shift for us. Um, discussion items, mission, vision, board, goals. Um, I hope Justine comes on for that. Uh, I've got it on my computer, though. Uh, and you all got a copy? We sent it out, mm -hmm. everybody? Um, uh, yeah, we were pretty excited by the stuff we came up with, and I think it's, um, yeah, so we'll, uh, let's say 10. That's optimistic, I think. But we'll be uh, planning for our SUD annual informational meeting. I'm going to give it 15, just because okay. I agree. On an executive session, uh, 10. And then second executive session, 5. five and I think that's... Uh, new hires resignations? Any? Uh, the one is an SU employee, so I think we're oh. all set. Oh. Do we have? Oh, do we get SU employee? Uh, right. Support staff. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll let you know who it is. Good. Well, Great, thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay, so we have something, but not long. Not long. All right. Nope. And another public comment, if anybody else joins us there. Great. Let us, oh, and uh, yeah, thank you, Bill. Did everyone get this from Bill? Um, really amazed that you can handle this, Bill. This is just beyond me, this stuff. But it won't be once we talk about it. Consent agenda, 4.1. Approve the minutes of Tuesday, March 1st, 2022, regular meeting. Anybody have a... Any comments or thoughts? What is your will? I'm all practiced now because I did town meeting. Hmm. Um, shall we approve them? Yeah, sure. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the minutes. March 1st. Oh, Second. great. Seconded by Robert. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Is there any public comment? I see no public. Very good. I continue to take that as a sign of support. If not, <laughs> please let us know. Uh, board comment. 
Um, yes, Amy. Uh, just to keep everybody up to date, I am going forward with the um, Rochester scholarships that um, oh, oh, and I've done it in the past uh, along with a committee of an alumni um, association member and a select board member. And this is a group that does both um, the town scholarships and the, the school scholarships that we have. So I do have a list from Tara of the Rochester uh, uh, seniors um, and we'll be sending out the application to them shortly and just continuing on with That's getting great. that done. Tell Excellent. Me about, um, I'm sorry, what? Tell me about the scholarship program. Um, so the town has a uh, Kirkpatrick scholarship that is um, awarded, it was actually the Rochester Select Board had decided to take some endowed money and set it aside specifically for a, um, a scholarship. Um, it could, was not your mark for anything, but that's what they decided to do. So every year in the town budget, they allocate the amount of money that's going to be used for the um, Rochester scholarship. There is um, a Martin Farm scholarship, uh, which was from when they, some students, there was a fire up in, in the barn and they got up in there and pulled the hay bale down that was, that was burning and saved the barn. And so uh, that's another scholarship. Um, I'm sorry right now, there's, I can't come up with the other ones. Um, so it's an amount for, uh, 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 it could be up to three seniors graduated from high school from Rochester that get uh, aid in continuing their education? Um, so, yeah, the uh, Kirkpatrick's, I, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I believe that um, we awarded three last year, yes. <laughs> yes, we awarded three last year. Um, fantastic. Yeah, um, let me come back with, no, with I, next I meeting and I'll report you exactly that. where we're at with it. I, we're just starting, so I, I just think it's terrific. It really is, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, it's, it's it great going. to be able to um, provide that for, for the students, so. Um, question, you've been handling all of this, and I know we've talked that, you know, how much longer your tenure on the board. Oh, and I totally and think if, that we need to, everybody yeah. needs to know how to do each other's And if you could job, so. maybe start thinking about how to outline it or talk it through Easy. with Tara so yeah. that people can know what going forward so this can be continued. Definitely. By this board, that would be Definitely. A, a very useful, um, very useful thing. Yeah, and at, uh, I'll kind of along that same lines, I would like us to to move more forward with the other endowments and, and get that uh, uh, everybody up to speed with. And I'd uh, specifically like to what tap we on your put that? knowledge with, with that. So that Were we going to put that on the agenda? Yes, we, we did. We did, and then it never appeared on the agenda the next week oh, and the next time. And it was, it was a very bit. It wasn't for last time. It was actually the time before, and it was such a, um, I don't know, or or even the time before that. So, why don't we put it on? For yeah, let's time? let's definitely put it on for next time. Cause yeah, I I remember us saying we were going to talk about that, yeah. and uh, I, I I think it's I, really. I do think it's very important. Why don't we include both? Yes, definitely. The scholarships that, that way, update and, 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 and then, endowments. And, then, and even if, if there's a spreadsheet or we could help make a spreadsheet or something that tells us yes. and then how the process happens. Um, I totally agree and I think there are some things we need to discuss and decide mm -hmm. how we want right. the process to go. And, um, Good, and I do think that's important for all the things that we do on the board is to, uh, that everybody knows what's happening because we should be able to to be interchangeable with, with, mm -hmm. with it. Well, and I just Take want over. to say how much I appreciate you've been handling this for years yes. now <laughs> since it's a merger, you know, and yeah. and uh, I really appreciate that you took it, have taken it on with such commitment and have followed through. Thank you. We have JC with us. Oh, oh hi, JC. JC. Hello. So nice to have you Hi. Here. Hi. Hi. There. No worries. We're here. You're here now. Good. Um, uh, further board comment? There being none. Um, uh, let's get into celebration of learning literacy in the woods. Yeah. So, do you have that PowerPoint that I shared with you? No. Oh, no. It's okay. Give it a second. Mm -hmm. I can talk while I'm doing this, maybe. Um, so, in. Stockbridge in four, five, six. Um, um, we 
Donna Gallant and Maureen Rowe have been working together to develop a joint, um, it's called Literacy in the Woods and then it expands into a joint math class. Um, and it happened, it started out as a reward that students earned for um, meeting reading goals during I Love to Read Month. Oh. Mm -hmm. and a celebration of poetry and they liked it so much that they wanted to um, keep it going the kids asked to keep it going and so they um, she put together this great presentation and they've started to do this every whew, this might be um, they've started to do this every two weeks now they have to earn it and it's two hours in the woods. And right now the focus is around poetry and vocabulary out in the woods mm -hmm. because it's poetry month. Mm -hmm. And if you just give me a second to figure out my uh, inability to share this via my phone. Sorry about <laughs> that. Um, Donna has put together, she couldn't be here tonight, but she put together a great um, presentation. Can you presentation tell us? That was sent to Anna? Yes. Yeah, Can you um, answer a question? Sure, um, go for it. Is there any plan it. to bring it to Rochester? Yes. Um, she and Mr. Hall have been working You're on it. Sorry about that. There we go. Um, have been working on it. She started out as a pilot. So, um, like I said, she couldn't... Um, here today but sent this presentation she actually shared it out I see why it's pretty impressive um so they focus on mindful breathing they all pick out poetry of their choice and are going to share it out uh they define and act out vocabulary words they play a nature game um and this is something that miss rowe brought to stockbridge uh, when she came to be a classroom teacher after being at nature's outdoor classroom they love to snack and eat tea, and that's a combination of some of their time with Amy uh, Braun around tea. And then they write their own poems from being in the woods, observations, and or expressions of gratitude. Um, and so then we have, this is kind of, um, so it happens about two times a month right now, now that winter wellness is over. And so here they are reading oh out poetry, as well as a student's poetry on the right. Um. <laughs> That's cool. That's uh, awesome. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's a wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it a wow. <clears throat> and so what they haven't figured out is that it's a little public speaking. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which there. is, oh no, reading literature loud yeah. is a big one for me. Really I love it. That. Do you find being outside that it's easier for them? Yeah, it seems to be like a, a safer That's space what I mean, yeah, yeah. To them Absolutely. versus the classroom. Yeah. It's also the way the schedule works in Stockbridge. There's it's science and humanities is really the large chunks of time where fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students are together. And then it separates out a little bit by grade level for math and literacy. So it's one of the few times that like they are together in a larger capacity mm -hmm. for a large chunk of time because they end up spending the whole half day learning together, which is pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So, yeah. Oh, my gosh. And they love it. I think they were disappointed that tomorrow's not literacy in the woods day. <laughs> oh. Go ahead. That's awesome. I only know that because I got an email okay. saying um. why it wouldn't let them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like it was my fault that they can go out tomorrow. But... Um, but they have to earn it, like you said. They do. They have specific goals with Donna and Maureen, and I have really no part other than to say, yep. Or no. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can be the good guy or the bad guy, depending mm -hmm. on the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I would love to see this here. And I think, you know, Amy would certainly, you know, jump on this. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Exciting show service. Which of course is another great skill. Yep. To learn how to listen. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Any more? 
Also, I love the idea of picking a poem you like, like having opinions about stuff. Adventurous. So this is them acting out adventurous. <laughs> this is the part of the presentation that really connected with me is the idea of acting something out in regards to vocabulary and really internalizing the meaning, right? Absolutely. Versus memorizing. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. And so what the kids don't <clears throat> know is these are words or skill sets that came up as a low performance area in the STAR 360 scores. And that's how she picked what she picked for that's vocabulary awesome. that's really, as an area really of weakness. That's really yep. good. And then I think enormous is the Put it in one. their bodies. <laughs> and sometimes it's probably fun to act out the opposite. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Poison. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's actually silent, isn't my understanding, this whole time. So they don't That's get to awesome. it's charades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that makes yeah. it even better. It does yeah. make it better. You can kind of hear this. Fame. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah. La, 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 la. Red carpet. Uh, oh, that must be Alice with her ears, cat ears. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then here's some of their own poetry. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm. Those are great pictures, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the rhythm of the woods, trees, bees, knees, leaves. <laughs> oh, I have no door. <laughs> yeah. Third one. Yeah. <laughs> that's Who deep. Will live? We don't know. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's neat. This is their it's, woods. I, I yep, mean, this is, is this across the river? Or it's just no, you go off the playground? Down across the field and out mm -hmm. uh, down the road. I've got to go there. Yeah. yeah. Come on I've over. I've never been there. Yeah, I think that is the last one. Very nice. Oh my God, that's incredible Special poetry. And yeah. what a great program. Well, yeah. Yeah. And as you said, that it's it's taking a problem and making it into a celebration. Mm-hmm. Which is just amazing. <laughs> that's like exactly what we're. We get the mission statement: creative, rigorous education. That's 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 it. Good fun. Yeah. Oh, shoot, we got to put fun in, too. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, can you convey our appreciation Absolutely. to Maureen yeah. and... and uh, Ethan, can I just can comment on Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I loved it, but I do think it's kind of unfair that we've got this spectacular presentation and these kids doing amazing things, and it's almost impossible for Jamie to, 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 to up... Upshot that one. So I think it's that's kind of unfair. But then when I think about the kids, I think about Donna, and, and really to pull that together, I think about their leadership at the local mm -hmm. school, yourself and your team, and Jamie and his teams. It's just a natural flow. This is, and, and Ethan said it's creative, but it's effective and mm -hmm. it's exciting. And wow, it's just, a, mm -hmm. it's just really, really lovely. And uh, to see that happening right here. Um, special, so thank you. I feel like I would have had a much easier time learning as a kid if 
if I had oh. those opportunities. You know. I, I still, I, I've mentioned this story before, when I walked into high school, a bunch of mature men and all said, wouldn't you have done better in high school if you'd been outside? And it was like, yes. Yeah. yeah. All of them. University. Yeah. It's just, it's just real. I mean, I hope our shelters will, yeah. you know, get. <clears throat> and really, we have COVID to thank for it. Well, right. it's true. It's, true. <laughs> it's really inspired yeah. and pushed us in yeah. ways. And we, like so many other things, we found the silver lining of it. And um, good. So right. how can we get this? Um, this was a wonderful presentation, but only us were able to see it. How can oh, yeah. we? How can we can just it be on the website? Yeah, yeah I just I, you know we have such wonderful celebrations of learning. I mean, it, yeah, the, yeah, all yeah. all this year it's been really wonderful, and I just want to continue to try to get that out to our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, Amy, the idea that maybe we could start. I mean, I don't know how. How do you get people to go to the website? Well, that's why we have to share it like on the Stockbridge Connections forum or. But we don't have something like that in Rochester. That's the thing. We don't have the same use because you know the Stockbridge mm -hmm. Facebook really acts yeah, as a community. Like Stockbridge has one, and, and then Pittsfield has one. Yeah, and we don't, and we try, and, so and it's just not. Nobody it's wants just to do different. It. It's different dynamics. Yeah, it's it's just, different dynamics. It, that's all it is. Yeah. You know, wait, just yeah. different dynamics. Um, but um, but a way to get. Well, and it's sort of a media question. Yeah. And maybe put it to our media person, but it's also how there is a community oh, bulletin ah, board. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. There is a community bulletin yeah, board. Yeah, Rochester Community Bulletin you're, Board is called. Um, you're very loud. I don't know why, Justine. <clears throat> Me neither. <It> Shocked us. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I can chat. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, it was just a lot. It was like ah. Um, uh, I know, and and it's how, and and we just I think we need to come up with this is also part of our mission statement is on there is how do we engage the community um, and ways of just, doing this. What you know, get it out there that these yeah, are the yeah, incredible yeah, 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 things yeah. that we yeah, are doing. Yeah. You know, and part of maybe when we talk about our informational meeting, I don't know if that's where we, you know, mm -hmm. maybe push could these we, links to or these places could, or have. Clips of some of these celebrations, yeah, 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 but um, yeah, yeah. we can talk about that later. Do you um, save them? Yeah. Do we have them in like a? Because I think that would be, it would be great if people could see, and maybe even if on parent teacher night, there is a little monitor showing, in the hallway, some of these. I don't know if that's legitimate or okay or not, but. Because, you know, parents are standing around sometimes waiting for the next thing, and I mean, geez, have something. Even the town clerks. Office, you could have like a little. Well, it's just something where we know they're going to be there. You have a captive audience. Yeah, yeah. And you can just have, you know, Show you look them. at video screens and the idea is it's like, here's a celebration of learning. And it's like, I had no idea. Right. Um, the only other thing I say about this is uh, um, I want this to be regular class and not just a <laughs> special event that they earn. Um, I hate to say, you know, and I understand the, the carrot and the stick, um, but the. Uh, um, there's a part of me that's like, this is too great to... It is incredible, but also um, when it becomes commonplace, it it is not as fun, and it's not as exciting, mm -hmm. and kids don't engage or as much. Or they don't take it as serious. Right, so yeah. so for it to be a spra you know, um, something that yeah. we, it's it's wonderful, and I think it's something that will happen, more, you know, more often, but maybe there'll be breaks in between to get them excited about doing something like well, this. Well, I think the prep, I know the prep time to be able to go outside like that. Yeah for two hours at a time, like to find the poems <laughs> and learn yeah. about poetry and do those things happen sometimes in the trust. So it like builds up, the, it's a culmination of two weeks. It's not just a like, yeah. here's a poetry book and go. It's the- Oh, they're kind of like doing this it. unit almost. Mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. So it'll shift a little bit um, the next time. I don't think it'll be poetry next time. It'll be something. That's exciting. It's so. very exciting. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's move on as much as we all really want to talk about this, because this is the most fun. Uh, but superintendent. Uh, so you have my report. They, uh, so the one thing I'll add is that, um, that I was just in contact with um, EI Services in Lyle today, and there's a grant that was just released about upgrading HVAC systems. Um, and our boiler system is definitely a needed upgrade sooner rather than later here in this building. Yeah. And so we're going to look to try to 
uh, pursue this grant. And it may require a special meeting. I'll let you know if it does. Mm -hmm. It would be a quick act on an RFP in order mm -hmm. to get on that grant. And so just, just know that. Stay tuned with that. Mm -hmm. um, Great. It's good news. Yeah. I just wanted to, it literally came across my desk wow. this afternoon. Is it federal or state? Was on it. Uh, my understanding is it's federal, but went to the state, and then the state's utilizing the money Great. this way. Um, and so I've got a meeting, hopefully, with Eric from EI and Lyle here in the next day or two. Great. Um, mm -hmm. To get some more details, and then we may need a, a quick special meeting to take action. So stay tuned on that. Mm -hmm. But good news, um, yeah. and then I'll take any questions. Folks have, I was in, um, you know, I'll continue to send you legislative updates. There's a lot in the works right now with the waiting study. It's positive for us in general. Um, and that's about how, um, that's about how we will, ed funding will come out to districts. It'll take, it'll take about a five year um, time period for that to take hold. Um, I've talked about it a few months ago when it was in my board reports about the idea uh, more of um, a w more equalized pupil, like you're used yeah. to seeing now, versus um, more of a block grant type funding. Um, and so, you know, there's no sense of direction yet which way it's going to go. Really, my takeaway from it is either way. At this point in time, it's a benefit to our districts in general. Uh, but I am monitoring that. Um, the special ed funding bill does look like it'll take effect in July. It won't be delayed again. That's how we budgeted already. Um, and of course, Tara has the update that she can talk to you guys about the yield, which is a positive manner. You know, my takeaway leaving the legislative session last Thursday was just this idea. And, and you know, I've certainly, with the administrative team, been focused on this and, and sharing with you as a board about just making certain that we use our ESSER money in like one-time expenses in general yeah. right. so that we don't hit a cliff, yeah. right? Yep. And Definitely. so I just, I want you to know that we're continuing to monitor that closely. Good. Um, and interventions that we did feel was important that we'll continue to budget for locally and through title funds to ensure that we don't have a cliff. Great. Um, and so just, you know, I think in general, that that's all concerns across the state. I mean, I worry about a cliff with the state in general, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is, as a whole, is the yield, right? So we've got a really good yield right now, and I'm worried about what does that mean two years from now, right? So even if we control expenses, the yield really could impact the tax rate. I think the plus for us is, is if the waiting study goes into effect, in general, our districts will see some relief um, in tax is now whether or not the yield you know changes that could be you know stay tuned right in mm -hmm. regards to the end fund so mm -hmm. there's just a lot out there going on uh, and of course a lot can change uh, in the 11th hour or the 12th hour really right well it's um, also fuel so, so just stay tuned fuel is a big yeah. one right now not to mention supplies in general that could change um, we know <coughs> that out there Okay, any questions for our superintendent? None? Excellent. Let us move on to principal, please. Yeah, so you have my principal's report. I don't think there's anything that's really jumped, mostly because we've only been in school one, one day since we wrote it, because we had the day off, or kids had the day off on Friday. Um, I had a question yeah. with the preschool screening mm -hmm. on April 15th. Is that when Stockbridge's preschool screening uh, is? Or? Yep, and March 31st was Rochester. Okay, Stockbridge, mm -hmm. the word was just missing. So oh, I sorry. Was <laughs> yep, fast. Yep. It's fine. Um, and my brain keeps uh, messing up. I, wanna, uh, I was going to ask a question. About, oh, yeah. Uh, about using the data points to uh, look at the teaching, do we get, and I just don't know this, do we get any kind of assessment on teachers? Yeah, that's what I do. But I mean, do, <laughs> so you do it, so right. we don't see that ever. And no. that's not the way, it just doesn't work that way. No, okay. typically not. Okay. But I think that what you see is effectiveness in regards to how our cohorts are growing. Right, like whether or not our kids are continuing to achieve, 
but no, it wouldn't be standard practice to, re mm -hmm. to review. Cool. For one, you have to be impartial, mm -hmm. right? right? And what I mean by that is you are the, the, the judge and jury if yep. we were deciding that there was a uh, performance issue. Mm -hmm. that you need to not have been swayed that's by right. that no, that's good. Issue. I knew there was a reason. Um, I just forgot what it was. Good. Thank you. Any further questions for our questions for our principal? There being none. All in favor signify no. Um, <laughs> business meeting. <laughs> Town meeting. So you all have a report. It outlines the due dates in April. And also lets you know that our pre-audit is scheduled for the week of May 9th, and the actual audit will be the week of September 19th. And then the main part of my report is Bill H-737, which is the yield bill that has passed the House and now is in the Senate. So if this goes through, the yield will be $13,472 for the property yield. The income dollar equivalent yield is $16,146. And then the non-homestead property tax rate was set at 1.449. So what does that mean for your voters? It will increase the reduction in the tax rate for Rochester to 0.0889. And then it will provide a decrease in Stockbridge of 0 0.0222. Just hold on to that. Hold on to that one more month. That's great. Thank you, Tara. You're welcome. And then if there's any questions. Any questions for our business no, Bill. Bill? Tara, when do you think um, the state will give us the income sensitivity numbers that we need to project the impact for those taxpayers paying their school bill based on their income rather than on their property assessment. Is that uh, tied in with this legislation that uh, you shared with us? Um, or is it a, um, you know, 737 or is that that's something else? I, Yes, the income dollar yield is 16146 in this bill. And that's what they would use for the income sensitivity. But, but I didn't, you're going to have to help me. We can do this off offline, but I didn't see the numbers I needed to run the numbers to see what the impact is on our um, taxpayers based on their income. So um, I, I'll work with you later. You, you, the numbers are in so we can we can crank those out i don't get anything from the state bill indicating how many of your taxpayers are paying based on income is that what you're asking no. sorry no. The, the two numbers i'm looking for is the state income rates based on act 68. Um, there's okay. two numbers that give us a school tax cap percentage and a state income rates percentage and with those i can run the numbers and um, okay. so those are the two numbers I'm looking for. Bye. Thanks. Did everybody else understand that? <laughs> well, uh, no, I'm more you, but two. No, 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 I understand. Two thirds of this are taxpayers pay by based on their income. Right. And if you look at the numbers, that's been very kind to uh, those taxpayers paying it that way and it also reflection on the, the sound budget being made by the school boards and the administration's budgets and the exciting thing is not only do we have um, if you look historically in the last seven years what they're paying has actually gone down and thanks to Lindy and her team and the whole SU our performance has gone up so Excellent. it's almost sounds impossible but it's very very significant because the, the word out in public land is our school cost per student is skyrocketing and our taxes are skyrocketing and um, unification is not necessarily helping and the fact of the matter is it's just the opposite and so these numbers are important so, to be able to, to convey i'm just trying so I, I understand you know people paying their, their taxes based on their income but now is the state 
is the state I'm just curious, so say somebody, you know, the town standards is three thousand dollars in taxes, but they're paying eighteen hundred. So is the school getting less money? Or is the it. state the, the state's being held accountable for the rest? Yeah, that yeah. goes way back to the, 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 the Vermont Supreme Court decision uh, based on unequal educational opportunities based on gold towns and other towns and gotcha. not the gold towns. So they devised a way where all the school monies, taxpayers' money goes to the state and they redistribute it back down and mm -hmm. to keep rural school communities Possibly. to be able to afford quality education, mm -hmm. they set up this income sensitivity, mm -hmm. which I think is unique in the United States of America. Yeah. Wow. And so it allows us to have quality education and have it affordable. Um, I'll put that in quotes because it all depends on what your income is, but it's, it's really working and, and I think it's something to be able to express to our uh, constituents and the people we work for, mm -hmm. um, what the numbers are uh, financially as well as academically, and I think this year is going to be one of those years that we can knock it out of the park again on both accounts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you know, what I was talking about with the waiting study would take that a step yes. further in regards to equity. That's the purpose of it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Other questions, business manager? No. WRVSU Policy Committee. Um, so the Policy Committee currently is working on um, some draft policies. Um, one, uh, Granville-Hancock Unified District has been working on a new policy in regards to residency verification for tuitioning students. It's modeled off of Stratton. Of course, they're a complete school choice district. But it's really looking at a uh, process around certifying that those who are living in our choice town districts that we have some extra measures put in place for us mm -hmm. to verify re residency. Right. Um, and we have multiple um, school districts that now have choice in the SU, um, some of which weren't used to it. And I think it made sense to look at that as a full board now that they've vetted it. So I brought that in front of the full board. It seemed to gain good traction. Mm -hmm. um, so a draft should be out in uh, May around that for boards to read for their first uh, review. Um, the other one that we're looking at, and it's, it's I have a draft out of Stratford around um, a policy around independent school policy, around uh, certifying um, that there's no bias taking place in any independent school, in, including a religiously affiliated school. Remember, we talked about that in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, there's also legislation in place right now in Montpelier that may take um, hold of that and actually uh, drive that policy forward. So stay tuned. I don't think that that reading will come out until the legislature closes because they're looking to adopt some policy on that um, in Montpelier. And then the, um, the final policy that we were working on had to do with social media. It was a policy draft that had happened a few years ago um, that got stalled when COVID hit. And um, so I've given the policy committee two versions. One, the draft that this board had, the SU board had already been working on, um, and then the model policy out of the VSBA. Um, and so they're going to be giving feedback on which direction they want to go on. So those are the policies that we're working on right now. Cool. Good. Great. Questions? Uh, WRVSU full board updates, including proposed change in meeting schedule beginning in August. Um, all right, let me get my brain going here. Update. Good. Uh, no, basically, it's about cutting back meetings, um, SU wide and school board meetings, uh, mostly to benefit um, some of the SU. People have to be at all of them. Um, and one of the ideas we were like, there's a bunch of different things we can do as an SU. This is sort of the supervisory superintendent um, evaluation committee is handling this. And that is um, uh, overlapping meetings. You know, we have six school districts and six separate board meetings right now in, you know, a month. And the idea of putting, I think it's now two, the idea of two, 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 
Um, and that what you would do is at the beginning of the meeting, the superintendent would um, would be there for maybe Ro Rochester. I think actually Rochester, would, we decided maybe I'd go later. Go second. Yeah, yeah go second. The idea is you have two superintendents, uh, sup SU, no, what am I doing? Districts. districts. Thank you. Two districts. Two districts. It's been a long day. Two districts, and the SU portion is in the middle. So the idea that you would have sort of, you know, I can't remember who we partnered with. We talked about Granville Hancock. So Granville Hancock. Granville Hancock, Hancock was Rochester. Rochester. It makes sense, yeah. yeah. Not to mention, good to see other boards. Not to mention, this is one of our biggest poll towns. As far as tuition students, I couldn't sure. Well, then the celebration could, of learning. Well, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. absolutely. That with that, you know, this is this is how to build a network as well. I think there's going to be unanticipated benefits from this. But what it really does is it gets. So are you six, saying we'll have our individual meetings and then Jamie would jump on board? Sort of. I mean, you know, he would he would probably stay for us maybe the beginning and we do his stuff Get, early gosh, yeah. and then he'd be there for the sort of SU or in general reports and then he would go off with Granville Hancock for the end of theirs and we would finish up our meeting anything we yeah. had. So yeah. how would that SU meeting work because it would just be the two districts? It's not an SU. Yeah, this it would right, be, it's, it's just, just an SU update. It's, it's just the It's what I do now. Okay. Superintendent yeah. report. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. the general. It's the general information yeah. about yeah. that you report to all districts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and the business manager overlap. the same thing. Yeah. 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 So we would start one at like five thirty, possibly, mm -hmm. or six. And this is the idea that we might also start a little early. Right. And um, so as opposed to we start <laughs> earlier. <laughs> but we then, might start end up starting yeah. later, actually. And then right. the one, one. Yeah. The plan was that we would at least try to have them offset about by forty-five minutes. Yeah. So that if there was business that, let's say, Granville Hancock needed, that. That executive session, there, something right, like that. Yeah. So yeah. the kind of the approach of how we do our agendas could look a little different. And my plan would be instead of just planning agendas, like right now I do it with your principal, your board chair, mm -hmm. and with Tara, I would do it, I would plan both of them out so that we that and both we would board chairs talk, could see and the, the, would, work, you're right, yeah. the working agenda of would both talk boards. about how that works and how that looks. So rather than you having six different meetings to go to, you'll have to Exactly. Three. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, the full yeah. board. We're trying yeah. to get him. Be much more <laughs> we're basically getting him yeah. and Ray yeah. and Tara yeah. a few more nights home, yeah. which is really because it's we're out it's of the, this too. comes out of the idea we're out of a crisis mode as an SU now. We have no more unmerged votes right currently in front of us. Things have settled as far as I yeah, yeah. Right now, right at this moment, right at this moment. Yeah. Sorry, at this yeah. very moment. But the idea is no. The, we, <laughs> but, sorry, sorry, don't, no private conversations. Uh, please share it with us if you can. Um, uh, but the idea is that we need to figure out how to make this SU a sustainable entity beyond Jamie, beyond Lindy, beyond us, and to keep it working as smoothly as it is now. And right now, we're still in the sort of crisis mode of Jamie needing to be, and feeling to need he needs to be, or, but I think all of us are learning that it doesn't need to be like that yeah. anymore. And this would be a very clear um, right. way to change. And if there was our, we're deep in a budget thing and we exactly. needed a special meeting, exactly. we could just well, have it. I think the high school. Or whatever. The, the high school is clearly going to be, you know, right. sometime where we may need Jamie all by himself just for us and that's and we'll figure this out you know we're going to try it and I'm sure we're going to immediately know what works and what doesn't and we'll, <laughs> we'll and stumble we'll see. And yeah 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 but I think in general correct. the intent is fewer meetings for the SU staff that has to be at everything and I think that's a very viable strategy going forward mm -hmm. I agree I think that uh, if we're this hybrid is also a very very important part of it, it I think yep. it you know it brings people in who just aren't able to be here in person so I well, I see that going forward you've seen the SU meetings I mean almost nobody shows up <laughs> um, which but I, it does get better I mean we do have get better, better attendance right. that way um, so um, I don't know if we need Great. to take action on this yet because no not yet just talk the idea is um, by August um, that we were talking about by August yeah, we if there's support what you well when you reorg that's when we start taking action. And okay. The ones that have yep. already ordered, would they'll adjust. So it'll be June first, because we are talking about again. Also, the other news is we're talking about July off. 
So Again, been, if, if there's no crisis, everybody gets July off from meetings, which I think was a really good thing last year, and I think it uh, would be a really great thing for all of us this year as well. Um, again, but keep thinking, all of you, about the idea of we are, knock on wood, out of crisis mode right now. How do we make this sustainable? All the things we're trying to do beyond the individuals who are running it right now. Good. Thank you, Jamie, for that. And thank you, um, uh, one Superintendent. Full, one other quick full board update. Oh, yeah. just, um, just a reminder that we're starting our board development series again. It was in my report. Uh, that's right, yes. And then, Ethan, you'll be in. We have board chair soup um, development. Mandatory meetings, remember? No, I don't at all. <laughs> it should be in your email box. I'm Chris, sure you should have signed you up. Oh, and I'll remind all the it. board chairs. But just, um, just if you can't come to the full board meeting, no, I no. will record it again and then send it out to the full board. No, no. There's a new trainer now, Phil Gore. He's really good. I think yeah, Bill he's yeah, going to bring it right. just another whole level of board development and expertise for us. So um, I strongly encourage you to think about attending that. And that is the April. It'll be at the full board meeting. Full board meeting. Yeah. Uh, this month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, April, May, June. I'm getting there. They're almost in my calendar now. Okay. Sorry, Ethan. Thanks. Yeah, wondering. thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, discussion items, mission, vision, and board goals. Karen, can you this? Ethan. Right? Oh, we have one something else? It's in there? <clears throat> Oh. No, I printed it. No, I had a whole bunch of. Oh, here, cool. All right, so um, would be good. I'll. Um, so I, I think the one, the thing I want to emphasize, it's not the packet. Is everybody? No, I didn't make the packet. Let me go make copies. Okay. okay. We want to jump over. Should we start in nine two? I'll accept it. We probably one of the principal. Why don't we jump and just go to nine two while she's doing that? Planning for our said annual informational meeting. Everyone know what it is? Yeah, it's on my schedule. It's on Monday. May something. It's not on my <laughs> schedule. That's why. Uh, calendar. And we said we would do a May second um, on Monday. Good, it's on good, my good. calendar. It because uh, our annual meeting. Our, our no. What is it? It's our budget meeting. Our okay. annual Informational meeting. Um, so Tara has worked on special all. informational. <laughs> so Tara's <laughs> worked really on a slideshow <laughs> already. Oh right? wow! With all the finances. Tara, you're amazing. Lindy's you. been working on your school-wide celebrations. Great. Um, for the first part, and so really, what I think we need is just knowing um, the board's desire to talk about the financial figures and. Tara's more than willing to sit down with folks and review that. Tara, I don't mean to speak for you, but that's what we've done. I would really, um, I mean, I'm just... And uh, been able to get board members up to speed at their, you know, individually around this. And then I think it is really nice when we have um, board Tara combination yeah. Um, yeah. at the forum. Mm -hmm. I think it's important for the voters to hear from the board, too around the budget figures. So really I think we're looking for the point person around that from the board. Lindy will hire, handle the whole first part around all the academic and social, emotional, and school celebrations. I frankly kind of stay out of it unless there's a question that I need to jump yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, no, um, there's great. a support. And um, that's really where we're at. Um, Bill, what do you think about being the point person on that? Numbers. Um, I'm good with at the big support, broad strokes. I, I, if you're okay I'm good with, with the big broad strokes. That's what I'm good at. I'm, good I, for I, I'm very happy to support. I just think that you have a very good voice with speaking to the community uh -huh. about, um, you know. Okay. Our, our, um, sure, I, I, I certainly can help address or reinforce um, or back up Tara uh, on the financial things because um, I. I think there's such a misunderstanding yeah. out there that we just have to continue to go back uh, with the data, and we have the data. Um, and if we can explain that, I think that helps, it gives some comfort to what's going on. So I, I'd like to talk to this. That'd be great. I think this actually could be sort of, you know, I was actually thinking, this down. yeah. 
Yeah, that this is like this is. Well, here's the thing. If, if, if uh, I don't know, I guess we'll jump back. No, we'll stay with nine two. Yeah. We'll so stay with nine two. Yeah. So what we need is we need someone with budget numbers who will actually talk. Yeah. Um, and I'll I'll you, handle the sort of broader. And share, Tara can share the slides. Yeah, yeah and and I'm slides. happy yeah. to to support as well. But I, yeah. if you could maybe be the point person, um, just because it is totally amazing, and I think you're t when you're talking about people um, misunderstanding. You know, when they first thing they do, oh, look at the per pupil spending is up so much more from last year, but yet the tax rate is down, what, in the teens? I mean, we, we, almost 20 cents that we've taken off the tax rate. So I think that's really important. Yeah, yeah, I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that. Uh, Ethan talking about where we're trying to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it's a board well, and this point about crisis mode, not crisis mode. Yeah. Crisis mode is now sustainability, and that this is, you know, we've also this is our second. I think of, in some ways, I think of this as sort of our second budget. I don't know. With your sort of thinking, budget is a it statement. Is. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of thinking that it's it's um, that we start. What do we need? Not with the template of right. what the budget exists. And I feel like this is sort of our second year we've really done that well with the team. And I think that's something to talk about as well. And just say that we really feel good about how we're, you know, putting together the budget and how the team is working together. Um, I mean, I just, I, I don't think we can say that enough. We just have an extraordinary team right now mm. um, across the board. And, and, uh, you know, that we're doing it for, a, you know, a reduced budget is the same thing you're saying, Bill. I mean, that's our big message. You know, we got an incredible team doing really great work across the SU and in our district, and we're doing it for less money. Mm -hmm. That's just an incredible message. Yeah, I think it's important, too, to emphasize we're asking, we're, we're at a place where we're asking them to put some funds away mm -hmm. in the reserve mm -hmm. funds, too, yeah. like explaining yep. that, yep. why that's a positive. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of things to clarify for folks. Should we sort of have a practice session next meeting, our April meeting? Because This that is was, our April meeting. This is our April, oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy smoke, yeah, that's okay. So is it important to you to you maybe know, have a, I think we should Like meet. with that, putting money aside, both buildings do need upkeep, and you know, well, the that, community needs to realize that, that you know, it's not, you know, it's a building and it needs to be cared for, <laughs> you know, fund. and there is quite a bit of work to, to do on these buildings. Well, as, and, and we also have to have a really good answer to the question of the high school. Because mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. I would be amazed if nobody asked about it. They might not. You know, everybody's gotten so comfortable the way the situation is right now. They may not, but I would, we still need to have a... Well, I think this is... So they haven't decided, they didn't decide on that? Yeah. Yeah, they're talking about it, um, you know, but, um, you know, there was a report, you know, if anybody watched the town report, there was a report from the two of the Envision Rochester members at the end of the town, Rochester town meeting about sort of where, you know, this, oh, there is a lot of interest. There's some serious stakeholders thinking about this building. Um, and, you know, we're going to have a big, obviously a big meeting to talk about it and what it means for not just us, hopefully, but for this entire valley. Um, but it's, it's, right. it's not a decision done before. I think it's, it's correct to just report out where they are, where they are. and mm -hmm. their plans for the meeting and the vote that they are uh, mm -hmm. projecting to have, uh, I believe, in June. Um, June is the report, right? Yeah. And and uh, there is a and they are planning on a townwide vote. So I think um, getting that information and getting it out there is is going to be important. So then we need to. What I would it, suggest you might do, Amy. See, Amy met with Tara and I and Lindy last year, mm -hmm. and we prepped. So if you yeah. and Bill, like, if if you're going to have a quorum, then I say just warn it as a special meeting, like you do your mission vision meeting. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Right. And it can even be virtual. And like, you clean it up, mm -hmm. and you know, you make any tweaks you want to make. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you kind of do a dry run, and then so you're ready to roll. I've yeah. I've just said I'm doing lots of things. I don't remember all of them. What did I say I'm doing? Goals. Goals. And what I think, Tara, I don't know how you and Lindy feel. I was thinking, 
if Lindy kicked it off with the school celebrations and then the board talked about their mission, vision, and goal work, and then you go to the budget. Yep. Uh -huh. Seems so. to me like a decent order. That's pretty much the order of the presentation right. now. We just got to add in I started the, board, that, the board slides. That's, I mean, all the rest of it's there. Do you think community members will bring us the school? The school? Yeah, I think they're going to be curious to where we're at with it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so that's why I think it's important, though. I think we should report out. Yeah, I mean, even like my curiosity is, you know, it obviously it can be a long, drawn out process oh, of transferring do. that building. Well, but our, yeah. I mean, we were hoping that we weren't going to be responsible for it this past winter. Yep. Is it going to turn into us still maintaining it this coming winter? And you know, are we thinking would, about that as a possibility right now? Uh, my personal opinion, no. <laughs> I, I want know, it to be no. I, I yeah, really we all want it to be no, I, no but no, no, is no, that I'm realistic? Saying, no, you know? um, I, 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 you know, this is this is my. As we get to that time when there's a town-wide vote, I think it's the time like we put letters into the Herald about the merger. I think it's time when we say. Please, Rochester, whatever happens to this building, we need it to not be part of the educational system anymore. Yeah. So even if you can't decide not to do this big project, please take it from us yeah. And so that then we can put the chain link fence. I mean, this is the image we're using now. I think, as I've said, is that the worst case scenario, nothing can happen to it. We put a chain link fence around it, and it, it is an abandoned building. Um, and... Um, that they, t you know, we might even put some money into that, but they just need to take this building so it is not, you know, our job is to educate kids. It is not to manage real estate. The town actually is better at it than we are. They have real estate. They have vehicles. They have, you know, stuff like that. So I, that's something I was going to put out there. But I really feel strongly that we've been very patient, mm -hmm. and we need to be, we need to be one way or another, we need to be done with this thing. So is that year. something? If, if that's my up, personal opinion. I, yeah, but we all need to be kind of on board. And yeah, like well, ready to answer that question. Well, I like brought it up a couple meetings ago. It. I called it that we need to be talking about this. Yeah, we need yeah. to be talking about the other side of this report, whatever way it goes, mm -hmm. and that we can't just wait till June personally and just sort of, oh, okay, well they're not going <laughs> to yeah, take it. Yeah. Now what do we do? No, I yeah. think we. I think it's part of the process. <laughs> of Rochester voting is that we make a very clear statement of what we need as a school board. Mm -hmm. And it's not to have music classes in that music room. It's that we need to not be thinking about that building. Mm -hmm. We've done very well in the last year not thinking about that building. It's kind of, seems to me the two pieces, and you emphasize the second piece or the first piece, whatever the case is, one is that I think we should proactively give the community an update at the information meeting, what's happening yeah. with the high school. Yeah. And to me, it's exciting. There are options. Yes. It's yes. real. It, it's benefit not only yes. Rochester, but the Valley. I want blah, it blah, to blah, happen. Blah. Yeah, and the second will. part of it is, well, when that, how long that takes and all this, sort of, what happens to the cost sharing until that promise, the, 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 the pot of goal is reached? And that's your point there, which is yeah. that the policy of the board is that we're going to continue to um, divest, yeah, not have, not divest have ourselves uh, this the school taxpayers pay for that. So I think there's two parts. One's the exciting, what's going on, the promise, the vision, mm -hmm. and the second one is uh, that no, it's uh, we're not going to stick it to. Uh, there's it's better almost like we're be better off bringing it up um, ourselves. <laughs> and I think it's better that I'm, we bring it up. You know I, what I mean? I Just have, so. have a, a quick... And it seems to me it's Robert, Ethan, or Amy to mm -hmm. uh, wherever it is on the agenda to speak to that and to see if there's any questions. Because um, mm -hmm. to me, it's the high road and it's the right road. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, well, and we've always said take transparency. Yes. Don't right. not not push something aside and say, oh, we're not going to talk about that now. No, we talk yeah. about it. Yeah. We talk about it. We we take the bull by the horns or whatever image you want to grab on. So is it your point that if that we should decide before our presentation a policy of if the town does, decides not to take the building, you're going to put a fence around it? Well, there's, um, 
There's two parts to that. Is that a state state requirement, basically? That... No, no, I I just think I mean it's just an image that I put out there really. I made it up um, at a meeting because it's it's it seems like the only way. You know, basically it's it's letting the building fall. You know, just it's Chesapeake. Right. And I also think, and they agreed with this um, uh, when I talked to uh, Vic and Catherine Shankman, Vic Roboto, that it's actually a pretty strong image in help to motivate the town to take this building and do something with it. Um, mm -hmm. uh, because the, the board right now is not in a position to do anything further like, like Dem demolish it or anything. Nothing. Like that. Absolutely so, nothing. So basically, I mean, what yeah. what the point is is that you will be putting no as is. Yeah. Well, I mean, that you're putting no no money in it and such. Yeah. Although, mm -hmm. if that's the case, there are a few issue side issues that you have to worry about of insurance. And I mean, well, we talked. To, we talked. To, I, I actually asked that question in between meetings, that's and they're okay. on. They're okay. They're okay with a, a derelict building. Okay. You know, so that, that so as that far is, as like say nothing happens, hey, we're not we're not touching it this winter. If you want to deal with it, deal with it. If it's not, then it's just going to. I hate to. I mean, I, and that's I mean, the thing. Sucks. You hate to put it that way. Yeah. But I think yeah. we're blind. We're being foolish if we don't ex expect yeah. it as a possibility. Now, as I say, this other thing that it's a lot to ask the voters of Rochester to accept the entire Envision Rochester plan without them being able to actually do anything because they don't own it. Right. There's this catch-22 there that everybody should know about. They need to own the building before they can apply for the grants for all the work that needs to happen, which there are tons out there. There's a very good, rosy possibility out there, the way they present it. But um, even if they don't go for that, that I'm still asking them that they take it and they be the managers of a der the derelict building rather than us because it's going to be a drag on our school system. We'll see what they do. But I think I feel like that should be the school's, our board's view. But I'm certainly, that is just my position that I'm putting out to you. So there's sort of three possibilities. I certainly want the most optimistic one, mm -hmm. that this becomes a real hub of activity and, and beneficial to our community, our valley, people working their new jobs. I mean, it, it, the vision is really extraordinary how it could transform. As somebody told... Uh, Rob Gardner, an elder, he called it, of the town, he said, this is the most significant vote that Rochester is going to take mm -hmm. about their town in 40 years, you know. Um, so uh, it's a big one, and I think we do well by addressing it and addressing it thoroughly. So I don't know, do we need a, a motion about case one, case two, case three. What do we feel about that? And that the board has a very clear decision about that. So when we go before the public, we are... I think the public would like to hear that. Mm -hmm. To know that we, you know, that we're not just being hopeful that the town's buying it because they, then somebody's going to say, well, what mm -hmm. happens if they don't? Yeah. You know, we should have a, a plan A, plan B, plan C. Well... I, I can be like, very vague. Go ahead. Um, you know, I would like to go back and actually look at real financials about um, about partial use of that building, about what it would really look like. What you know, if if the if the town's not taking it all and the school has to either just shut it down and let it fall onto itself, um, I would like to see real numbers to be able to say, yep, that would be way too much of a taxing on our school system that would seems that would be ridiculous because we're not really talking about real numbers now well, they are. how they're, much they're how much is it hundred thousand dollars a year to keep it running that's how much or Tara has decided. They, well, that's I mean, the number that the envision Rochester the architect and the um, the man who's running the feasibility study that's the number they gave the to keep that's, that is as a full use a building fully that's use. in use in use right yeah fully right. in use and, and you know that's even that number is a little inflated for instance you know they have fifteen thousand dollars for plowing well the, pl the the as I recall it's plowed by the town isn't it or do you guys plow uh, the majority of the parking lots plowed by the town. Right, so I mean, they're putting in numbers that are. You know, so my point is, is that Free. as a a partially used building, those aren't fully. But don't forget, there's also two million dollars. This is the renovation cost 
over two years for that building to be up to speed. For the that's two million dollars. For the entire building to be up so and fully enough, used. Which is, <laughs> and then I mean, you know, if we're going to start parceling, here's the thing, and this is what I want to avoid: is the distraction on our principal, on our superintendent, yeah. on us. We know what that's like. We know what this, this, this much, how much can we, you know, we know what that's mm -hmm. like. We know what it does, the distraction factor of that. Well, I we do you know that the auditorium and the music room are are of use and right. worth holding on to. I mean, is there a, another option of, say, the town doesn't want to take it? We just you use Figure that. out how much it would cost to keep the entire building or, but it, it, it really, what we don't want to do is abandon it, but do you? Would it make sense to demo part of the building and leave? Hugely expensive. Right. Seven hundred eighty thousand well, dollars to demo to demo the whole building. Well, what about we not don't the have, We don't have. We don't have a. He didn't have a figure when you're on the meeting Maintaining for. The let's say the north end of the building mm -hmm. demoing that part. We do know it needs a new boiler, and probably new electrical system because those are both archaic. Um, so that means, you know, this is what's so hard is you see the space. Yeah. We were in the space for the town meeting, and it was warm in there, and it was comfortable in there. Mm -hmm. And the fact is, like this boiler, that boiler could go at any moment. And, and I just feel like we've gotten such a clear message, and I think we're doing such a good job with what we have, which is getting back to our goals. Mm -hmm is what we, you know, is being creative. And, and I, I also think there comes a point where we put it to a vote, vote. And I don't have a problem with us not, you know, right. where it's a split vote. Well, and, you know, and that's why I would like to, to, before I could say that, no, mm -hmm. that is a completely wrong option to mm -hmm. use that at all. I would need to see real numbers well, like for options. What numbers? For using the auditorium, using the music room, not, not using the rest of it, maybe not demoing it, block just, it off, board it up, and just be yeah. using the art room and or whatever. I, I'm not going to specifically say which rooms right now, but what would that even look like? Um, it might be completely ridiculous, and but then I can I know. I know for sure it's not just us well, then, pulling numbers out of the air. Well, on then, Rochester well, not, has I mean, these aren't numbers out of the air. I mean, these are numbers that I'm giving you are the ones from the feasibility study. Okay. Well, yeah. then maybe I need to review that. That yeah. if those are real numbers in there, um, these the stuff that's been in there has already been paid for by our taxpayers, and to let it mm -hmm. all just go into the trash, um, is that the right thing to do or not? Uh, I I have I know how I feel about it. Yeah. I really do know how I feel about it, um, and that's what everybody on this board needs to make their decision about how they feel about it. And if you need more information, then we can't make a decision tonight. Uh, I mean, we could vote on it tonight if there's a motion. It's not even warned. So. Yeah. So. So, but I'm just saying. Uh, right. So but I do agree we, that well, we, we do have. We already have on the boards. We have a decision that we will have no educational activity happen right. in that building. That is what's going forward, and we will maintain it at a minimal level. That is what we have decided so far. That's what's going forward. So to not maintain it next winter would take action by the board to change that decision. Mm -hmm. That's clear. Okay, so we're going to have to make that decision. So I guess what we really need is basically if it comes up where somebody says, well, if the town isn't going to take it, what's next? Mm -hmm. We just have to have, we, got, we have to be we're, able to We'll say what I think we say, we're, we're, we don't agree yet, as a yeah. board, what the next step is. Well, I think you say you, you're doing research, right? Like, okay. that you're going to need to make a decision. Right. There's that no. shuttering it totally is an option. Mm -hmm. And I would continue the focus on, like, as a school district board, you're doing anything, everything in your power to work yeah. with the town to disperse the building to the yep. town. Right. Yep. That but, is certainly but they, best, yeah, but they, the yes, best Yes, we would option. have to have a meeting and a discussion and a vote mm -hmm. in the very, very near future yep. Uh, yep. To, to give a final decision on, on the well, on what would happen. Well, let me, let me see if I can craft some notes on the positive you're talking about, Jamie. Positive way to 
Yeah, yeah. present Keep that. It positive. <laughs> present that. Yeah, it always wants to because you never yeah. want to get. Yeah. Yep. Present. Well, we certainly want to make certain that we're conveying to the town too that there could oh, be. Oh yeah. Some, I mean, there's right. no question that it would be really. Right. We we can't happens. keep going in this exact same path. We no. have to do something no. different. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. yeah. For sure. Yep. Good. Do we have our, have we finished, we just went over time on that. Um, uh, yes, by seven minutes. Oh, not bad at all. Um, do we feel like we know what we're doing and should we schedule this special meeting now? <clears throat> That's what I would do. Uh, does it need to be in the next week? Like, should it be closer? You probably want it to be closer. Okay. I don't even know if every like I don't even know. Certainly not if vacation. Everyone week. even has to be there. No, like, um, not vacation week. Um, we should do it. How about the week after vacation? That's a little tight. The week after vacation. So this is your vacation yep. week, the 18th to the 22nd, and, and then, then you have then. all this week, and it's actually the Monday. Great. Um, or the following. So Great. it kind of Let's would work it, it yep. being in that last Let's weekend. Let's look at um, so the policy committee on Monday. Yeah. Well, you, I, even if you did it during the day, I think it's fine, like your committee. How about Wednesday day, 27th, at like lunchtime noon? Is it the three of you? Is that what you're thinking? Sure. Are you doing the yep. meeting, Tara? Yep. Yep. Sure. And if you, if anyone could come, any board yeah, member. Yeah, right? please. Just, in fact, I think it'd be the 27th. useful. That's the 27th at noon virtual. Will we get an invite for that? Or? Oh, yeah. Okay. It'll be like a regular It'll be warned. It'll be warned. And it shows right up in my calendar. Just tell me it's, it's uh, Monday dinner. <laughs> That's Monday. I love no. it. I'll warn that central office and virtual. Just now so that it's 6, 6 p.m. or 6 p.m. Oh, I love it. Uh, that? Oh, my God. It's not oh, written down. Uh, 6.30, it says, actually, on my calendar. And that's going to be in Rochester, right? Yes. The informational meeting? Yes. Yes, in Rochester. Do we here? Probably in the gym. Probably in the gym. Good. We can do it in the gym. Great. There's no seats in there anymore, though. There's chairs. There's plenty lots of chairs. Of, there are lots of chairs, yeah. Good. The bleachers are not safe by any stretch of the imagination. Be nice. Okay. Goals. Um, what? Oh, what else? Um, if I can just go, keep going with the. We talked about getting ready for the school budget vote which is the night after, the day after, our informational meeting. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm under the impression that the vast majority of the people that are going to be voting the next day will not be listening to us the night before. So it seems to me that it'd be important that we coordinate how we can get the message out about our budget. Uh, one way we're doing it is everybody's going to get the school bulletin and I want to commend our chair for his eloquence in writing the board report um, that's going to be included in that report. So everybody, the households and the two communities will get that. Uh, but that doesn't mean they're going to read it. And who knows what they're listening to here, there, whatever. So my suggestion is that we need to spend just a couple minutes on how we're going to get the news out beyond the informational media, Letter to beyond the, the bulletin. And it seems to me there are th at least two different mediums. One is the Herald and the letters to the editor vehicle that's very effective. People love to read letters to the editor. And so I think that's one thing we should plan Especially and organize. And the second one would meetings. be the parents, getting information back to the parents, how important it is. Um, you can't count on education quality continuing to go up, up, up without uh, the the finances, uh, and so every vote counts, and we really need them to get to the, the polls the next the next day. So I'd like to do that. And then the, the third thing is I'm a I see these reports, these bulletins as not only informational but historical documents. And I'm a big person about having pictures. And one nice thing about the school bulletin, it's full of kids and teachers um, doing wonderful things. We just saw it tonight. But I also think it doesn't hurt for the oh, electorate right. to know who we who are. We are. Yeah. And so uh, connect a face with a name. And I don't know about you, but it, um, I think that's important. So I was going to suggest that you between that now and good. publication date, and I don't know if it's too late, that this board consider having its picture yeah. taken. 
And I'd love to have Jamie and his administrative team and Lindy and the teachers so that um, we can, uh, to me, it just it, it, it humanizes it, but I've never quite seen Only it. my left side, though. Um, <laughs> and we're, we're bashful and we're uh, kind of shy about these things. But I think down the road, who are these people? What are, oh, that's Patrick. Uh, there's Ethan. And so I'd like to suggest if we could do that, um, on the picture side, I don't know who coordinates that, uh, Lindy or somebody. The mailer's at the print already. Is it? So it's too late for that. Well, but we let's put that, that in for next year. I think year. we should definitely do that. That's a great and idea. And I'm sorry, Bill, because you, you brought that up several weeks ago, and I just didn't pick up move okay. with it, and I apologize for that. Uh, well, that's less important, yeah. uh, but I think it's just a nice thing to do, and once you do it, it just, just becomes... Well, it doesn't mean we can't do it in the school entry way, yeah. you know? That we don't have pictures of who we are in the school or on the website. I mean, I think it's, you know, well, I think the administration, it's really, there's a lot of ways to do it that so isn't in the school it's board. Um, so, I, do we do an individual picture or a group picture? Group. Group. <laughs> a group. Good. Group. Okay. With masks on. It's <laughs> <laughs> all on the world. I'm going to wear a wolf mask. <laughs> you know, you can, with, with regard to the Herald, you can also buy space. If you feel yeah, strongly true. about nice a piece of information that should go in, yeah, we already have our what filter ad are we comes going to use? out before our vote, and that's already something Kate and I are working on. Oh, great! Is okay. like what our budget supports with well, pictures and. I will. I will. Uh, that will be in the paper. That will be in the paper. Mm -hmm. okay. So you've got a letter. Going? Not a letter. It's an ad. I have to look at the timeline. And I'll, I'll, I'll do a letter. I can I'll do a letter too. No, I'll, I'll do, and I'll do a letter yeah. too. I don't think. Yeah, let's. Uh, more the merrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'd love to speak about the tax impact because I think uh, it's another letter. I just. Yeah. Yeah. Build the momentum. Reinforcing those. Um, uh, how about messages. I go? I'll go next week. Okay. I'll go next week. And there's a deadline. What is it on Monday or it's Tuesday? Tuesday, there's a Tuesday, Tuesday by noon for that. Tuesday by noon. Following Thursday, so. But it also doesn't. Okay. You know, the Herald has a business, and it wouldn't hurt if we did it as ads too. Um, spend a little money. We have an ad going in. No, I know. I'm just saying, letters to the editor are great too. But it's just like, hey, <clears> vote. <throat> you know, even even things like that. Just think. Hey. And a street sign. Yeah, got, yeah, got me yeah. on the board. Yeah. <laughs> right there, you go. Yeah, exactly. The true street sign. Votes coming up, and not just the week before, but maybe even two weeks before. Vote coming up, especially with parents and stuff like that. A newsletter? Can it be? It goes with the newsletter. So yeah. historically, and I know the newsletter is something new to Rochester folks, they put it in the newsletter as upcoming. I do a robocall, a robo text. Oh, wow. The day of, because I think that reminds parents. Wow. Oh, oh, that was today, better. right? Yeah. Right, right. And you have time. We usually send it like 1030, right? Perfect. When the polls open. Wow. And we can schedule it ahead of time. Uh, That's great. Oh, I have a question. If there's the foolish. ability to do that for parents, why don't we have the ability to do that for members of the town? We I don't have have not, not that it would, no, not that it would be your responsibility. No, 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 no. But like, if we pass that message to the town clerk. I mean, do we, does the town clerk have email addresses or no? So you couldn't just do that. Well, it's our directory stuff. Yeah, it's our directory stuff. That like So all those first day of school forms yeah. that get filled out, yeah. like that builds and updates our emergency contact. That's how you get the snow day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I, get, I get it. <laughs> I see how it could be a campaign that somebody from the town Well, no, I mean, we're always talking about how it's a concern that parents know what's going on, but the rest the of the, the community yeah. doesn't. Right. You know, it would be great if they could get emails mm -hmm. regarding stuff, if they wanted it, you right. know, as an option. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a whole, touch that's your, a whole... Touch your select board. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, that's a whole other can yeah. of worms, but it would, I mean, that's one way of getting information out there, email, you know. For sure. Yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, when is the mailing going to be in their hands? What week? By the 22nd. By the 22nd. So if I'm next the latest. week, I could say, hey, the bulletin's coming out soon. Yep. Look for your bulletin and look for these points. Yeah. Okay, good. Good. Um, what, what is the date of the actual vote? The 3rd of May. The 3rd of May. Oh, there it is. Tuesday. Um, 
Good. Anything further on our informational meeting? Justine, you still there? I haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> yep, I'm here. Good, thank you. I don't have any questions. That's good, thank you. Uh, right, mission, vision, or goals. Um, so, uh, one of the things Bill has, Bill has been really very useful in this process uh, because he is um, sort of, I, I really didn't understand. I've made some mission statements before and then I quickly proceeded to throw them over my shoulder and completely forget them. Um, but what he really got across to me, and I think to our committee, is the idea that this is, it's actually something you look at and help. Oh, do we need some more? Yeah. That we look at and it helps us make decisions. Because then we know how we feel about things and what our priorities are. And so with that in mind, that's sort of where we've gone to this and where we've gotten here. And that the, um, uh, so that the vision is the broadest thing that you look at. Rigorous creative education, working with all the resources we have. Um, and I felt very strongly about the creative part, just because I, you know, it was talking about also getting in, you know, that we're thinking about different ways of teaching people. But the rigorous is, is very much what the standards are, how we're teaching, of testing, all that kind of thing. And then using the idea with all the resources we have is the idea that we don't always need something new or that we haven't explored all the possibilities of the teachers we have or the other resources we have in our town and how to use that. Um, um, uh, so that, and that is sort of the overarching thing that then you look at everything else from. Um, so then the mission statement, and any part of this, please, um, once, we, once we get, let me go through it, and then you come back, because um, we definitely want some talk, discussion about this. So the mission statement is a comfortable space for uncomfortable learning, okay to be wrong. And I remember I brought that up at our board retreat, and it was such a, a thing I heard from Sean Lenahan about some early testing, and that it was okay to be wrong, and that I just felt like that was such a powerful statement but that you're in a space where that's okay, because you feel safe. But a comfortable space also means safe, secure buildings, you know, that aren't tripping on your roofs, that it covers a broad gamut of, of ideas that we're talking about. Two, using existing resources to the extent of their creative potential. Again, I think looking at teachers, looking at interactiveness, as opposed to looking at how do we bring in a new person you know, a whole new salary, raise the budget. Not that we don't raise budgets, but have we exhausted all our creative resources first? Um, and then three, a platform rooted in transparency by maintaining the confidence and trust of the community. Um, I just, yeah, so I don't know. I, I really like these. Uh, make notes as you go through it, see what happens. So then we broke it down to four goals that we thought covered everything. And I'm, so, and, and one of the things Bill brought in, and you'll see in this, that each goal has a statement and a measure, and then sort of a comment explaining it. And right now, we don't have measurements for all of these. Um, so um, we're, that's, that's sort of our work in process. Um, so the first one is academic achievement. Rochester Stockbridge Elementary student body meets or exceeds the academic achievement goals established by the WRVSU board starting with the 2021-2022 school year. How do we measure that? Well, obviously there's testing and all those things like that. Um, um, and um, goal two, financial management. And this is sort of something I came up uh, a way. The budget we need, want, um, and that, I'm now thinking that you're, you go the other way with creating a budget, you know, that you start with what do you need, then you go to the budget, but I guess that maybe this still works for that. The budget we can afford, um, the budget we can pass, and the budget we can administer. Um, so these are sort of four ways to <coughs> test how are we doing financially. Do we have what we need? Can we afford it? Can we pass it? Because that does, you know, there may come a time when we say, yes, this is the time for an increase. This is the time to really push it and raise the tax rate by a percent because it allows us to do all this that is so important to us. 
Mm -hmm. um, but can we actually pass that? And the budget we can administer, meaning, and this is where I feel is a good time to have this idea, multi-year building and ground capital plan to protect and improve the capital assets. There's probably other parts of the budget we can administer, but this was sort of at the end of our work time. And so, um, um, as I say, I would love to hear, we would love to hear anybody's riff on these other things. Goal three is communication, a strong reciprocal relationship between parents, school, and community. Um, uh, how do you measure that? Good, uh, maybe by passing budgets, I don't know. But uh, I think, um, you know, hits on a Facebook page is another way. Um, but I, I, I mean, I don't know how these things, you know, likes or something like that. But um, how do we feel about communication? Um, and then uh, Bill's big one for the fourth, and he felt this was strong enough to have it as separate goal, board governance. And that the board members conduct conduct reflects our board governance principles and operating protocols, which you realize that we did that. We approved those several months back. Um, and, uh, and the results of a year-end board member assessment, which I think is something we will have the tools to do from the VSBA, is to sort of say, how do we do as a board? And what is the end of our year? Is it after we pass our budget? When is a good time when we reorg? When's a good time to do that? I don't know. So this is what we did. I think it was a productive day. I'd love to hear any feedback from anybody, certainly Lindy too, you, because just especially about the financial management and any of these other things. We're ears. What do you have to say? Is it a useful document, I think, is the most important part. Very, yeah. As far as helping us make decisions. I, I, I think it's a great tool as to what, broadly what we're trying to do, and then we got more in depth with each goal mm -hmm. um, would be helpful. And I think too, like you said, as far as refining how we measure things, I mean, for instance, goal three, you know, like how do you measure that? Is it a survey that's sent home to parents? I mean, but then how do you get something to the community? Um, that's like kind of what I was talking about before. It seems like it's really tough to inform the community of what's happening if they don't have a child at school. I mean, it's funny. Not everybody cares, but no. I mean, one of the ways we survey it, and I don't know if this is, this probably is the opposite of getting information out, but it is that there is some trust is that so few people are coming to our meetings. Mm -hmm. In other words, there's nothing they don't think there's going to be anything come happening at those meetings that they're going to be surprised by. <clears throat> but that's sort of anti-result. Um, and, um, and then number one for mission statement, because you, you were talking about a comfortable space, but then you, you mentioned safe. Should that be a comfortable slash safe space mm -hmm. for uncomfortable that. learning? Mm -hmm. I need a, a little clarification on what you exactly you mean. Okay to be wrong. Okay for who to be wrong? Um, for the, the students to be wrong? For the teachers? I mean, are you talking well, about, I would, I would talking actually, about experimentation? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're also talking about an attitude toward learning. Um, that learning isn't just about getting right answers. Learning is, well, I did it wrong, uh, and it, and maybe wrong is the right. Wrong, wrong is the wrong word, and I'm perfectly fine with that. It, it, it means that it's about, because when a student gets a, student gets a wrong, a incorrect answer in a test, it may well be that the teacher hasn't taught that child properly. Mm -hmm. And so in that case, it's, and I think wrong is the wrong word. I think there's a better yeah. phrase for that. Yeah. But I don't, that's what I heard that day, and so that's what stuck with me. Mm -hmm. But I'm totally open to a better word that sort of, um, and I guess I like the directness of it as opposed to, you know, embracing all comers or something like that, which just, to me, just doesn't 
It, it's good. It's good. Um, I don't know. I, I, I hear your question, and I don't have a good answer. I think yeah, go, Justine. Am I still really loud? Yes. <laughs> Is it possible to turn, turn it? I'm going to type it. Okay. No, 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 it's okay. No, no. Now that we're used to it, we can. We're, it's not as jarring. Once you start Powerful. talking, it's okay. It's just when you first start talking, it was surprising. It's explosive, yes. So first. go ahead. We're ready. Uh, I think the first thing we wanted to say was um, it's okay uh, to, sorry. It, uh, not to, it's okay not to know, to not know yeah. something. I think yeah. it was more like that. that. Yeah. Like, yep. yeah, that's what I remember. Comfortable not knowing things and therefore comfortable asking questions, comfortable being wrong, okay, comfortable, no. um, okay. you know, looking stupid in front. You know, you're not stupid, but like that's the fear. <laughs> yeah. Children yeah. are afraid to look stupid in front of their friends and therefore they might not ask questions. They might not try to give the answer that it might be wrong. It's sort of like a comfortable space to... I, I think that's, I mean, I like that. Okay to, okay to not know, okay to ask not, questions, yeah. okay to yeah. learn. Yeah. I th yeah, I think that the emphasis really needs to be more on um, the, it's okay to want to learn more or, or because yeah. just to say it's okay for the kid to be wrong about what they're learning and then that's the end of it. No. It, yeah, yeah, it yeah, yeah, doesn't yeah. help them no. progress to learning the skill that they mm -hmm. need to Not to learn. knowing is... I think the emphasis is the comfortable space yeah. for uncomfortable learning. That's really the point. The thing is, I would also say that this, this holds true for the teacher, too, for the administrator. It's okay not to know how to face right. a problem. It's okay to ask questions about how to learn how to do that. So in that sense, I feel like this is, a, this is an important statement for us. Um, and maybe it's a fourth mission statement. This okay to not know, okay to ask questions, and okay to learn um, is is a is a fourth. I mean, I, I I would put that out there because it's certainly how all we want our administrator to be. We want them to be open to this, to improving. Right, and I just uh, yeah, okay to be wrong. I'm I'm fine. I, I, yeah. I understand what you're, yep. um, the way you're interpreting that. Oh, yeah. I just feel no, that. No, no, no. I'm, 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 it's, it's gone. <laughs> it's been gone for five minutes now. Um, uh, whether we come back with that as a fourth or not, I think we can, I think we, uh, with this phrase, not knowing, okay to not know, okay to ask questions, okay to learn, mm -hmm. um, it, that, yeah. that's another statement. That's a very positive statement. Um, good. Anything else? that, you know, we can, um, and I would, Lindy, too, if there's anything you can help with in terms of measuring some of these things, especially in the budget stuff, how do we measure the budget we need, want? Um, how do we know? Well, that the administration feels that they're supported and are able to, um, to do the, what they've envisioned to do. I mean, I think the budget we need slash want, like the measure is um, that we're fiscally responsible with that. Like we're coming, you know, we're not running a deficit because then that means that there's something. And you're getting what you need. Right. Yeah. And we're getting what we need. I mean, I, I see it kind of tied to the academic success, the social emotional success, teacher success. Like it's all interchangeable. Like the budget supports what we do because we're able to do what we need to do. Because I, I don't know how to articulate well, that. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, they go hand in hand. They go it's hand in one, hand. One well, and this, the other. this may not, you know, this, the budget we need, want, the budget we can afford, the budget we can pass, and the budget we can administer. Uh, all of this I'm willing to, you know, I'm, I'm right. personally willing to throw out if it's not useful to us, if it doesn't help us make decisions about things. Um, I mean, I, yeah, um, I think it's pretty powerful, Ethan. Um, a budget that we need. That's, the board really needs to know that. If we've got these goals, we've got these performance standards we want to meet, we've got these capital requirements to keep you know, things running smoothly, we've got to pay our teachers fairly, everything else like that. We need to know that number. What do you really need? 
then the board's got to determine, okay, we, we report to the parents, um, the taxpayers, everything else. That goes to the second point, which is, you know, what can we afford? But if we don't know what is needed, it's already dumbed down. I don't know, excuse me. It's already been, okay, we need 100%. We're only gonna, we're only gonna offer 80% to the board. We need to know what, what's being left out. And then it's up to the board, it seems to me, to determine, well, we can't do all that 100%. We only can do 85%. But I think that number one point is very important. We need to know whether what's being offered by the superintendent's team is what we need. In the, in the view of the administration's team. And that's a very, very, very important. Um, and just like the budget we passed, we'd like, I always ask the question, is this the budget that's gonna allow us to do what we need to do? And hopefully we can continue to say yes to both of those. Sometimes uh, the, the conditions are such that we're gonna have to uh, pull things back. We're gonna well, have we did to cut things. And we did that and, last uh, year. And that happens. We don't even see that behind the scenes with 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 uh, with uh, Jamie and, and Tara and the whole team. But that first question is important, and uh, um, because who knows? Uh, maybe we can afford it. Maybe we can sell it. Well, and if we um, and we will never know that unless we're told. Um, so, uh, Ethan, I totally support your uh, that first point, and then the afford is. That's our job, is, is to figure out what's needed and then or not, can we afford it? And we better do that as boldly as we can, uh, asking the tough questions. You've got it up there under the, um, using all the resources we have. We ask those questions. Um, so you always test the budget with that. Yep. Are we using all the resources we yep. have first yep. Yep. before we raise yep. taxes? Or what are, you, what are you obtaining by raising the yeah. Well, again, but then we start with what do we need? Mm -hmm. And if we really need another teacher, sorry, Robert, go ahead. Uh, I want, in one sense, to contrast with budget development, which I've been through in the school boards and in, in the, uh, the town budgets, in what I think is absolutely the hor most horrible way to do it, which is let's start with what we used last year mm -hmm. and let's cut, shave here and cut there without looking at what the overall picture is. Yeah. And we have to absolutely not do that. We need to, mm -hmm. and I love this, that we are asking for now, as a, is contrasted in, in time immemorial. Uh, not what did we have last year, but what do we need? And mm -hmm. then to say, you know, this shaving of $500 here or, or $100 there, is absolutely the, the worst possible budget well, development process or is it, we could have. You know, what, what could you have used last year that you didn't have? You know, right. Yeah, well, the, yeah. the example of that, I think, is when we, when, when uh, Christine Mayer, the language, world language, became available, yeah. and, we, and we as a board quickly said, yes, we want that. And we put that to the administrator, how do you make this work? And you went back. And you made it work right and I think that's that's the model here is that we said we want need this in our curriculum and then we went down can we afford it well we made it um, um, so I don't know so I, I guess I'm getting a consensus that this this likes and maybe we won't have a measure for all of these I don't know and we can we can also spend some time in committee with that um, uh, I did want to point out the one part, the budget that we can afford. One thing we don't have in here that was in our general notes was the idea, and Bill has talked about this quite a bit, of selling our school in the sense of increasing tuition. How do we bring in more students? And I sort of thought that the budget we can afford, if we want more, how do we raise more? You know, how, and that's a big area of how do we encourage other students to come here? Um, so I guess what we need, you know, we don't want to spend that much more time if there isn't that much. So, you know, we can go back. Um, I'm getting general approval of this. Um, I'm glad that wrong is gone. Um, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep working on this and come back. Oh, yeah. Well, just I mean, as I was thinking about budget, we need to want, like, for me, immediately, the, the measure that came up to is does it align to the priorities and the mission of the board, right? Like, 
certainly as, as we were looking at this zero base budgeting method, like I am constantly looking at is the, is, are the, you know, again, 80%, well, of your budget in general, right, is staff, like that you can control anyways, other than tuitions, right? You don't get to control those. Well, you could, but we won't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it is, it really is like, you know, is it focusing on your priorities? And I think every, you know, I've tried really hard to say each district gets to have their own flavor on how they do this work, right? It's not one size fits all. We know what's research best practices, but allowing districts to really put their own flavor on how they do that work. And so, you know, an example would be, you know, the idea of having outdoor education would be the idea of having foreign language would be ensuring that we have strong reading and math like those are consistent trends right now across the SU mm -hmm. we recognize math was lacking so we knew we needed to do a significant investment in that mm -hmm. and so you know certainly I think having being able to come back to like some of your other indicators to say like is it truly does the budget support what's important to us mm -hmm. um, and again, that's not necessarily quantitative, but it's certainly qualitative. Mm -hmm. I think you can get that flavor from it. So, uh, with it, with regard to communication, and that actually touches on on other areas. I, I think we um, it's very vague there of the in terms of the relationship between parent, school, and community. Um, I think we might may need to consider broadening our the, the ways in which we communicate, and we may need to spend money. You know, I mean, you, you see some of the in in the Herald. You know, some of the schools, um, especially the, the the vocational school, they spend a lot on <laughs> something. Go. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they uh, um, they spend a fair amount of money on, on ads and communication. Uh, as far as measuring it, you may have to spend money on that. You know, those are. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to broaden the mm -hmm. the viewpoint of rather if so that we can get to you know more specifics on that. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> And also, just because we, does there, is there anything in here that you don't think uh, we, we're missing? <clears throat> anything jumps out? As I said, the, the, the tuition part of it. We've spent some time talking about that as a board. Um, I don't want to. I do want to point out, and it reflects Jamie's comment and our collective interest in reinvesting in our capital plan. And uh, I've been in so many organizations, the easiest way to cut is just, okay, we'll just kick the can down the road, you won't maintain, mm -hmm. and put money back in. And I was in public works for a long time. You drive lousy roads. Why are they lousy? Because the community didn't keep reinvesting in those roads. Mm -hmm. So um, the positive thing is that we've got, uh, and Jamie said you want to have the budget reflect the board's priorities. And, and one of our budget items that are gonna be voted by the voters, and I think we should speak to with pride, is the $284,000, um, the carryover monies that are gonna be invested in the, in the Rochester um, educational plant uh, for build, capital improvements. So um, we're, in doing that right thing, we're investing it. We could have, a lot of boards would say, oh no, just return the money. Um, so we're having a very strong um, uh, budget year as far as impact on our voters, and uh, at the same time we're doing the prudent thing, which is investing in our capital plan. Both those things, I think, are should be we should speak about, and it, it speaks to Ethan what you talked about here it, it coming up on, on your item here on budget we can administer and the multi-year capital budget. So um, yeah, we're heading in the right direction. And I don't, I don't know if the school building is around is that's the place to put that, but um, for now. Um, good. Anything else on this? That's good.
All right. We'll go back and do some more work. Okay. Uh, executive session. Attorney client privilege communication. Uh, to a Lindy. I'd like to make a motion Lindy. to enter executive session for attorney client privilege communication. Inviting. Inviting. Superintendent, Superintendent principal, principal, and, and business manager. Tara, business manager. And as soon as we're not recording. Uh, we are back uh, from executive session with no action taken. I will entertain a motion to enter executive session a second time okay, for, that, but that's okay. for labor relations and invite I think you same uh, same Inviting the superintendent, the principal, and the business manager once again. So, did somebody move that, please? So moved, or do I need to do second. the whole thing? Uh, just no, just so moved and second. second. Yeah. All in favor, we go. Yes. Aye. Aye. Thank you. Aye. Aye. See you later again. And we're back. Or said, uh, with no action taken, <clears throat> uh, we are at public uh, new hires. Action, possible action, we're not taking any action. Uh, new hires and resignations. We have a... We, just, we have a resignation which is at, at the SU level. Mm -hmm. You want to speak to it, Wendy? Yep. Um, one of our part-time uh, food service workers, Evelyn Twitchell, will be stepping away and resigning. She gave her two weeks notice last week. Okay. So from here in Rochester to just... She doesn't want to leave. She doesn't want to leave her kids. She doesn't. She really likes everything, but it's just a better situation for her financially to pursue something different. Mm -hmm. um, do we have a lead? Uh, right now, it'll be a week before vacation where it'll just be Julie, and she'll be training someone who's been subbing here and there for us um, mm -hmm. to just be able to fill in, but she feels like she really needs to figure out what she needs before we repost. Good or redefine that position. And is there uh, well, never mind. Of another time. I can ask that off. Thank you. Do we need to accept the, uh, Well, it's actually the SU board that will accept it. Got gotcha. you. She's an SU Good. employee. Yep, got gotcha. you. I think it's important when the SU employees in your building that you guys know. Yep. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, public comment. Any public out there? I see none. Future agenda items? I got the Rochester's. And Stockbridge, I thought, and Dallas. Yes, that's yeah. A, yeah, it was. We have to be important to say that the trustees. I, mean, yeah. I think it's important to update folks on that. Oh, absolutely. Well, so I, I got that. that, and then your mission and vision work. You'll get um, not in May. In June, you'll get your academic data report. I think May is a social emotional. Right, report. social emotional. Then June is academic, and then August is SBAC. So I only coming the next three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good for you. <laughs> and we will be reorganizing the beginning of next yeah. meeting, right? Yep. On the third, if that's it election. Be the gotcha. But so you our can't next... do it on election day. Oh, I mean, gotcha. You gotta be a sw I mean, oh, so we won't be re. I mean, you could. Uh, no, you can't. No, we can't. Polls don't close till second. Yeah. Yeah. But we are still gonna have our meeting that night. No, I'm, I would say you don't. Cause so we have the special meeting to reorg. Well, um, you said we should maybe. Um, do our regular board meeting a different day, right? Yep. Rather than gotcha. not even have a meeting that night. On the third. That's correct. correct. So, yes, I think that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, we want to go the Tuesday after. That's the Sharon board and the Gregor Hancock oh. annual. Oh. It's on my calendar. I appreciate that. Well, I know. So, it's I, 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 it's not, I love it. Whoever maintains this calendar. But it's. So you're oh, right. I have. I, mine is yeah. um, not iPhone, so I don't know. Oh, got you, got you. Thank you. <laughs> Good for you. Um, um, all right. Well, so you could go that Thursday. Cinco de Mayo. Fifth. We'll lose all the party harms. Uh, that's up to you, or you could go five. That's on fine. Monday. Do five. Thursday the fifth. Why don't we say tentative that? I don't. Yeah. yeah. Six thirty. Yep. Is it? PM May 5th? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm. Tentative, and you'll confirm and send out. Thursday. And update my calendar. <laughs> It'll be at Stockbridge. Stockbridge. Yep. Yep. Stockbridge. 
Um, just on the, the vote on the, 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 the second, the third? Third. 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 I haven't seen the ballot. I've just seen the, the posting. Okay, so how do we get uh, Ethan and Justine? Turned into the town clerk Saturday, and Stockbridge will get theirs tomorrow. They were already closed tonight. Okay, so there will be something sent out with names of our incumbents on the ballot so that they can... They there was can... no one that turned in consent forms in Stockbridge, and on the Rochester ballot, it was Ethan and Robert. We got that. Right okay, so okay we got that, and so we got to get the word out, Justine, and and uh, in Stockbridge, that so, you need a write-in at yeah. this point. Right. That's it. Yeah. Whose seat was up in Stockbridge, Justine? Justine, are you running again? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you only need one percent, so I would encourage you to do a like real push on social media, just reminding people you're running. Okay. Just and because then write them in. And write you, you, in. you need to be written in. Your name is not printed there. Right. Um, okay. And I do believe that uh, the ballots, if you want to um, do a... What do you do? Your request. Yeah, you request a ballot to, to do it and then mail it in. Like we have the ballot. Was it called? Absentee. Absentee. Yeah. I'm going to call that I, I, know, I was like. I know the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. We had, that's yeah. why we had to get them into the town clerks yeah. now because they needed to have them in time for absentee ballot requests. Yeah. 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 Yes. And it comes back to us. And then your other blank on your ballots is you don't have anyone for a moderator and you didn't have anyone for clerk of the board. Oh, those are awesome. We well, we, we should clerk of the board we didn't get last year. Yeah. And so I was able to get Jenny. Yeah, yeah, which right. really should But she, but she never gave the commitment to, to do it again. Um, it's the one could time. be any of you that you could talk during your I would. It's just difficult for me because I don't have solid internet. <laughs> So it can be kind of what the board is who certifies your warnings and who certifies your vote. So it's just so the town clerks. Sorry, go ahead, Tara. Oh, did she freeze? Yep, yeah. She sure did. So the town clerks email the results to the clerk of the board, and the clerk of the board puts out the results from there that's right. like your board they certify. that's you certify right that's it and where, and where that's it? so it's got to go to the schools and you would the just papers. Send, yeah it's it's just you basically are a, sta a stamp of approval right that's really all the that the clerk is doing and when we i don't know remember we all so just signed the warning or how, like i'm just trying to not this time well wait this time it's generally I, I guess i just i don't understand if i had a better understanding of what it, it i could probably do, do it you know, I have a whole document that I can send you. Okay. Yeah, I'm not saying that. yes yet, but I will look at the document. No, 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 no. <laughs> you spoke. That's it. That's it. We've all assumed. Uh, Dan McKinley in the past, <laughs> yeah. and, and for moderator Dan McKinley in the past, has yeah. been happy to do it. I don't know if we want to. I'll, I'll reach out to Dan him. McKinley. Yeah. Okay. He owes me anyway. <laughs> right. He owes you for the town meeting. So. Uh, that's yeah. good. Maybe it's one percent. I mean, so the threshold's not high. Yeah. It's not too late to not get a write-in. Right. So if no one's written in, are, are they appointed? You can be appointed them by, by the board. <laughs> can you slip through the book? How about him? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's, go, let's go home. Um, sorry. Uh, no, no. Not that I, I really enjoy spending time with you. It's all lovely. Thank you so much for your feedback. And uh, and again, our compliments to uh, Maureen and Donna. It was lovely. Yeah. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. By Robert. Second. Second. Amy, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very much. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Justine. Uh, thank you, oh, Orca yeah. Media. <laughs> thank you. Uh,